Hello guys, Adivs here. First things first, I want to thank my subscribers for our humble channel reaching over 100 subs. To each and every one of you, a heartfelt thank you. I start modeling this guy from a box primitive. I add an edge loop to it, chamfer it and extrude it to a negative value. Then I chamfer its edges. In order to highlight inner edges, I give them a single chamfer. The robot's eyes are created as basic cylinders. Make sure to give them a decent amount of edges for them to look smooth and round. I stick to 32 edges here. I use single chamfers to highlight some hard edges. In order to copy the eye to the other side of the face, I set its pivot point to the middle of the robot's head and then use the mirror tool. Then I create some bolts and washers. I make them really huge and thick to give the robot a somewhat naive and cartoony look. I use dot loop and collapse tool to reduce the amount of edges to make a transition between a washer and a bolt. I center this object to the middle of the robot's head and use the mirror tool to position it in all four corners of the face. This external plane serves as a workpiece for an improvised mouth. Once again, I highlight it with a single chamfer. I remove the face plane, erase back faces of all objects, align them properly and merge them into a single face. I add some support edges on sides of the head so that some triangles I create aren't too thin. The robot's body is made from a seven-sided cylinder. I chamfer its edges and probably knit to a neck of some sort, which is also chamfered. If you don't apply smoothing to a torso, leaving all of its edges hard, then you are free to use trees here instead of a proper topology. Never mind the hanging hip here, I will remake it as soon as I am done with the boot. There isn't much to comment here, as all I do is some basic polygon modeling with some extrudes, chamfers and aligning vertices to a particular edge. Make sure to make elements thick enough to maintain the overall stylized look. I use target weld here to give the backside of the foot some interesting angle. After chamfering external edges, I set smoothing angle to 2 to highlight those single chamfers. Also, I use a cylinder to create a fake joint. The leg is made from a simple spline that has its edges set to smooth. Now I detach and remake the robot's hip a little bit in order to merge it with the leg itself. Remember to fix your smoothing groups now and then. When working on such robots, I prefer to give them rubber joints for knees. It makes it so much easier to animate them if I'll ever decide to. I hold Shift key when applying swift loops in order to preserve the overall flow. Also, I use extrude with negative value to create the desired shape. This part can be baked, so you want to optimize the model. As usual, I detach intersecting elements, blend them together, fix their topology and attach them back. Topology can be pretty outrageous here, since we are dealing with a flat surface. I modify the robot's body by applying connector elements that will link the body to robot's legs. Make sure to make them intersect like polygons properly in order to prevent Z-fighting. Arms are made from six-sided cylinders. The absence of elbows gives the robot a cute cartoony look and also makes this guy's job so much harder. He will have to jump to actually fix something. Remember to keep most surfaces flat if you want to cheat slightly with the topology. In most cases, you are free to probe in such objects together and connect everything with trees. I use nothing but extrude, target weld and connect edges here.
when modeling elements such as this range, I prefer to block them out with different objects, then merge them together and work on details. You don't have to work on both sides of symmetrical objects. This is a very basic and obvious thing, but I keep forgetting about it myself. Sometimes you just succumb to slow and repetitive process of polygon modeling. Just like we did before, I highlight most hard edges with single chamfer. Basically, the robot is a combination of simple forms with single chamfers and occasional inclusions of smooth forms. Once again, flat topology saves the day, as we get the ability to connect everything with trees. Obviously, that won't work on more advanced models, nor will it allow you to use subdiv. There isn't much to say here, as all I do is some basic polygon modeling. The whole list of tools here is edge-constrained, aligning vertices to a particular axis, swift loop, connect edges, and extrude tool. I've cut out the boring process of merging everything together. I do it step by step by detaching intersecting surfaces, bullying them together, fixing their topology, and attaching them back, sealing the deal by welding vertices. I won't connect robot's legs and hands to its body to preserve the possibility of potential animation. If you like some particular element of the model, remember to save it as a separate object in order to scavenge it later on for some subsequent projects. In order to remove some weird shading from flat surfaces, you can use Weighted Normals modifier. I insert and extrude the bottom part of the head to make a cavity for the improvised neck. The main purpose of it is to make our robot able to rotate its head a little bit. I group all elements of the robot together and set their pivot point to the head's middle. Then I position it to the lowest part of the robot's legs and place the model to 000 seam coordinates. Then we check the model for angles, overlapping vertices, and open edges. To do it, I mostly refer to 3ds Max built-in XView tool. Finally, I fix pivot points of all rotating elements and give my model a basic material. Thanks for watching, guys! In the next video, I'll show you the basic process of texturing this robot in Substance Painter. If you like my videos, feel free to subscribe to my channel for more stylized content. And most importantly, have a great day!